Today, we are going to the late 19th and early 20th century. So sit back as we go to the USA. Emma Ledoux was born on September the 10th, 1875, in the small town of Pine Grove in Amador County, California. She was born Emma Cole and had a comfortable upbringing. She had considerate and caring parents who always wanted the best for their daughter. Her parents' marriage, however, was not a particularly loving or happy one. They were known to argue a lot, and as Emma became a teenager, she would often hear the petty squabbles of her parents. It was no surprise that on the 2nd of March, 1892, when Emma was still just 16 years old, she left the family home, and with her mother's consent, married a young rancher named Charles Barrett. Around the same time, her parents separated. 16 was very young to get married in California in the late 19th century, as the average age for a woman to marry was at 22 years old. The marriage did not last, and as the couple started to grow up, they also started to grow apart. They then decided it would be best if they lived separately, and eventually they divorced in 1898, when Emma was still only 22. One of the reasons given for the divorce was that Emma had been seeing other men. Although she divorced in 1898, Emma had actually left her husband in 1895 and started to see a local miner named William Williams. Shortly after her divorce was granted, Emma and William were married. He was three years older than Emma and had come to the USA a few years earlier from England. He wanted to take his wife away from her hometown as divorce still carried a social stigma in late 19th century America, where at the time only four couples per 1,000 would end up getting divorced. He persuaded her that it would be good if they moved far away to the rapidly growing mining town of Bisbee in Arizona. William hoped that he and his wife would be happy in Bisbee, as it was a small town that was experiencing a large population increase due to the success of the copper mines and the vastly improved communication links since the railway arrived there in 1889. There was also plenty of work for him in the copper mines, so he thought that together with his wife, he could live a happy and comfortable life. This, however, is not what happened, as two years later, on June the 20th, 1902, William died. He was only 30 years old and had been considered a strong and healthy young man. So the fact that he died so suddenly was by many considered to be highly suspicious. However, it was eventually determined that the cause of his death was gastroenteritis. Emma benefited from an insurance payout of nearly $10,000. Before the death of her husband, Rumours had circulated around Bisbee that Emma had been seen with a man named Albert McVicker. He was a Canadian who was six years older than Emma, having been born in 1869. He left Canada to work in the booming US mining industry, eventually settling in Bisbee. Emma's husband had confronted her about the rumours during their marriage, but she just dismissed them as idle gossip. However, on the 1st of September 1902, less than three months after William's unfortunate death, 26-year-old Emma married Albert and he became her third husband. Albert was very much in love with Emma, but she never seemed to return his affections. She missed her mother and missed living in Amador County, where she had grown up. So she told Albert that she would be going regularly to visit her mother, who needed her as she was getting older. This was not true, as her mother was in very good health, but Emma was just pleased to be away from Albert. She wasted no time when back in California and was soon being pursued by men. Particular attention was paid to her by a gentleman named Eugene Ledoux. He was a kind and considerate man who Emma had known since her childhood, as he had always lived close by. 
but he was also not very well educated and some people considered him to be illiterate. Emma was very happy to receive him as a guest at her mother's house and accept his invitations to go out. As well as going out with Eugene, she would also spend time with a man named Joseph Healy who worked as a plumber and while she was flirting with both men, she was still married to Albert. When Emma first went back to California, she would return quite regularly to Arizona to see her husband, but as time passed, her visits back to Bisbee became very rare occurrences, and it seemed to most that Albert and Emma were living separate lives. So much so, that on the 26th of August, 1905, Emma married Eugene and became Mrs. Ledoux. Why Emma married him is a mystery, as she was still married to Albert. Albert wanted nothing more than to be reconciled with his wife in California. He knew that she much preferred the lifestyle there, and his priority was being with her and working as hard as possible to make her happy. He managed to find work for a mining company in Jamestown and took lodgings there. Emma would visit him, but she never stayed for very long. Juggling two husbands was not easy, and Albert had no idea that his wife had married another man a few months earlier. In March 1906, Albert and Emma took a trip to San Francisco and stayed at the Lexington Hotel. That evening, Albert became quite ill, and Emma asked a hotel to call a doctor. It did not take long for the doctor to arrive, and after examining his patient, concluded that Albert had been poisoned. Fortunately, Albert recovered. When the couple next met, they went to a hotel in Stockton. Albert thought that this could be a new start, as they had agreed to rent a house in Jamestown and wanted some new things. Together they went to a furniture store in the town and ordered a variety of items for their home. They asked that they all be packed and transported to their new home. The following morning, March the 24th, Albert was again not feeling very well. Emma went to another store in the town and purchased a large chest, which she asked to be delivered to the hotel where they were staying. She then went back to the furniture store and asked that the furniture she and Albert had purchased be sent to the address of Eugene Ledoux, who she claimed was her brother. Still shopping, she next visited the hardware store to buy some rope and then returned to the hotel. While she was there, she sent a telegram to Joseph Healy, her ex fiance from San Francisco, asking that he meet her later that day at the Royal House on Eddy Street. The chest was delivered and Emma asked the delivery man if he would return in one hour when she had packed her things to take the chest to the train station so it could be sent to Jamestown. When the delivery man returned, he was unable to transport it alone as it was too heavy. So he asked a colleague to help him and together they took the chest to the train station. Emma then left the hotel with another man. At the station, Emma requested that the chest be transported to Jamestown, but somehow she did not register it properly. So despite the fact that she and the mysterious male companion had boarded the train, the chest didn't and it stayed in Stockton. The station workers dragged the chest to the baggage room where it stayed until later that evening when the staff noticed a strange smell coming from it. The station officer called the police who quickly arrived and instantly recognised the odour so they were not surprised when they opened the chest to find it contained a dead body. The body was fully dressed but without shoes and the police got to work on establishing the identity of the unfortunate person found inside it. It did not take long. First, they spoke with a man who had transported the chest of a station, who told them that he had transported it for a lady staying at the hotel. They then spoke to the hotel owner, who gave them access to the guest book. Staying in the room, the chest was delivered. Room number 97 was a man named Albert McVicker, and his wife. 
The police then searched the room and it was apparent that the occupants had left in a hurry. Inside there was a photograph of a woman. They showed it to the hotel owner and the man who transported the chest. They both confirmed that it was a lady who had been staying in the room and who went by the name of Mrs McVicker. The police sent her description to all the neighbouring towns and cities. On Monday morning, a woman fitting the suspect's description was seen and then arrested in Antioch. When the police asked her to identify herself, she told them that her name was Emma Ledeur. The same day she was escorted back to Stockton to be interviewed by the police investigators. She was searched and her husband's watch and chain were found in her possession. The press made the story front page news and it soon became the main topic of conversation of the people of Stockton and the surrounding areas. The body had been sent for an autopsy but when that had finished it was put on public display at the city morgue. People of all ages queued to see the body that had been found in the chest at the local railway station. The authorities did not want the horrible crime to turn into some sort of show and realised that they needed to bring the whole grisly episode to a conclusion as quickly as possible. The results of the autopsy proved that there was morphine and a small amount of chloral hydrate in Albert's body, but probably not enough to cause him to die. The coroner's report suggested the cause of death was due to blows to the head. There was also a suggestion that he was still alive, albeit unconscious, when he was put into the chest. The police interviewed Joe Healy, who was with Emma in San Francisco when the chest was opened. He told the police that when he read the morning paper and learned that Emma's husband's body had been found in the chest, he showed the paper to Emma. He said that she was shocked and said that she would return straight away. He then accompanied her to the train station. Despite the evidence against her, Emma proclaimed her innocence. She told police that her husband and a man named Joe Miller were drinking on the evening of March the 23rd in the hotel room and Joe Miller put something poisonous in Albert's drink. She said he became unconscious and died. Fearing that she might be accused of murder, she then helped Joe Miller put the body in the chest and then she left the hotel with him and together they went to the train station and boarded a train to San Francisco. But who was Joe Miller? The police had been unable to locate him and concluded that he was probably a myth. The trial of Emma Ledoux began on June the 5th, 1906. The defence claimed that Emma had already been tried by the press and by public opinion, so would not get a fair trial. The case against her, however, was solid. First, the prosecution told the court of her bigamist ways and they said that they believed that her husband, Albert McVicker, was about to discover his wife's bigamous marriage to Eugene Ledoux. So she devised a plan to spend all of his money on furniture and then silence him by poisoning him and putting him in a chest. The prosecution then presented a procession of witnesses who were all able to collaborate their timeline and theories. The defence tried to disprove all of the prosecution's theories and discredit their witnesses. But on Saturday, June the 23rd, at 2.30 in the afternoon, the jury was sent out to consider the evidence and they returned six hours later to find the defendant, Emma Ledoux, guilty of first degree murder. The judge sentenced her to death by hanging to be carried out on October the 19th, 1906. This was the first time in the history of California that a woman had been given the death penalty. At the same time, the sentence was automatically given a stay of execution as her defence team appealed the sentence to the state Supreme Court. The appeal was to be heard in the summer of 1907, but it wasn't until May 1909 that the decision was made to grant Emma a retrial. The date was set for January the 25th, 1910. The state, however, was aware that the retrial could cost up to $15,000 and the defence were worried that Emma was found guilty last time and without any new evidence was likely to be found guilty again. So on January the 26th, 
Emma pleaded guilty in exchange for her sentence to be reduced to life in prison. Emma served the next 10 years in the St Quentin prison. Then, in 1920, she was granted parole. She went to live with her sister and her sister's family in Los Angeles, but she soon got back into her flirtatious ways and acted in a less than respectable manner. This was against her parole conditions and within a year she was returned to prison. She was granted parole again on the 30th of March 1925 and in 1926 she married a man named Frederick Crackbon but unfortunately he died in 1929. Without the salary of her husband Emma had to generate her own income so she set up a marriage bureau. Single men would send their details and be paired with an appropriate single lady. This Lonely Hearts agency had one big difference and that the only eligible single lady was Emma. Eventually her scheme came to the attention of her parole officer and it was deemed that she was in breach of her parole conditions. So in 1931 she was sent back to prison. Emma Ledoux died in prison on the 6th of July 1941 at the age of 69. Her body was buried in an unmarked grave at the Union Cemetery in Bakersfield. The chest she used to dispose of her husband is on display in Stockton. Hello everyone and thank you so much for listening. As per usual, please leave any feedback or comments you may have and I will see you in the next brief case.